Ahoy mateys, this is Brickbeard and today it's finally time to take a look at one of the sets that has been the main inspiration of starting this channel in the first place. I'm talking of course about Barracuda Bay. We're gonna dive deep into everything this set has to offer. This is the complete model once it's built and this thing is huge. Uh, of course there's a lot of air everywhere in between so it's not like a fully uh, fully condensed build. Um, but just the height and the size of this is really really impressive. Uh, of course uh, me being a long time uh, LEGO Pirates fan this was uh, not only a day one purchase for me but a second one purchase for me. I remember uh, waking up uh, at night to order it immediately as fast as I could uh, because this was just something that really spoke to me uh, of course with my love for the LEGO Pirates team. And um, I even voted for the original project on LEGO Ideas because this is another set that was uh, released through the LEGO Ideas range. Um, so it got 10,000 votes and uh, then it was uh, redesigned a bit, um, uh, actually very drastically redesigned. Um, but I think the final result is more than, uh, more than an improvement on the original version. Um, which, by the way, was done with the fan, designer, uh, fan designer's consideration. So that's always a great thing when they uh, collaborate with the original designer of the set. This is, of course, set number 21322, the Barracuda Bay of the Ideas range. It comes with 2,545 pieces and it retails for 200 euros, 200 dollars. It's still available at the moment uh, and we're going to find out in this video if this is a set that uh, is worth your money and worth your time. Um, the price range, it comes down to 8 cents per piece, which is a pretty good price. Um, there's nothing you can you can say about that, especially if you keep in mind that this is actually a two-in-one model. So of course you have the main model here, which is the uh, Barracuda Bay, the uh, the stranded ship on a uh, on an island. The second version is the ship itself. Since this is such a huge set. Uh, for this video, I'm only going to focus on this build and I'm going to do a second video of the boat and the building of that because it takes some time to still conform, conform it to the second model. Um, that's where this bag comes in. You also get a bag with some spare pieces and some sails uh, that you're going to need to uh, to change the main model up to the boat. Uh, and the boat, um, we're going to come down to that and going to take a good in-depth look at that the next time. So the fan designer that originally put the idea on the website LEGO Ideas is uh, Pablo Sanchez. And uh, there's a lot of little references uh, that he threw in here. Uh, all of them dating back to the classic Pirates line of the 80s and the early 90s. Uh, which is of course where this set gets the aesthetic and uh, the, the visuals from. Uh, so a lot of nostalgia in this, uh, in this set. Uh, you could even see it in the box, uh, the box art which uh, really resembles the, uh, the 80s, uh, early 90s uh, box art. And I think that's an amazing detail that he threw in there uh, because it really takes you back to that time when you were a child and the smaller Lego, uh, LEGO Pirate sets really in your mind looked something like this. Uh, this is really like the, the culmination of um, all the nostalgia that you could have about LEGO Pirates thrown into one big set. So Pablo Sanchez, he was helped by uh, three official LEGO designers on this set. Uh, we have Carl Merriam, uh, who is known for Minecraft, Creator Expert, Ideas uh, and Super Mario. Then we have uh, Milan Match. Uh, that name sounds familiar because we've seen him uh, in some Creator, some Toy Story, uh, the LEGO Movie 2. Idea sets, uh, Marvel and Disney. And then the last, des uh, last designer that worked on the set is Samuel Johnson, who did also a lot of different themes from City to Ninjago to Chima, Ideas, Nexonites, uh, and most recently I think he worked on Harry Potter lines. The set comes with eight classically inspired minifigures uh, and of course uh, we have uh, a skeleton or two thrown in here, which they don't count as minifigures but they still uh, yeah, could be seen as such. Since there's a lot to say about the set, uh, we're gonna break it down uh, evenly uh, when we get to the specific theme, so when we go to the rating. So that means we're gonna start with a good in-depth look at the minifigures. The first minifigure we're taking a look at is called Lady Anchor. 
She's a new character and she wasn't around when the original LEGO Pirates line was released, but it's still a great looking minifigure. She has a beautiful hairpiece and an amazing looking print on her torso with a belt and some red garments with white sleeves, a golden necklace and the print continues into the back. The face print is a pretty normal looking uh, female face print with a smirk on her face and some lipstick, but there is no print on the back side of the face. The least interesting thing about this minifigure is the lag piece which is just a normal uh, non-printed beige piece. Then we have Quartermaster Riggins and he is a very familiar looking pirate if you grew up in the 90s because this is a remake of a classic pirate and you can even see that in the torso print because it looks very uh, old and even a bit faded and that is absolutely done on purpose. It really looks nostalgic in that sense. Although on the back side of the torso there's another bit of print which wasn't on the original minifigures but it looks really beautiful and really makes the torso print uh, come alive. The face print is also an updated version of the original classic version of this minifigure and it just has a lot more detail without losing his unique facial expression. So he has brown hair with a beard and uh, some uh, stubbles on his chin and a stubbled mustache, an eye patch on one eye and just like Lady Anchor only printed on one side. The lag piece is also a standard uh, grey lag piece but it really fits with this character because this is also how we saw him in the original set of the 90s. Next up we have the first of the broadside twin brothers. This one is called Starboard and this is another remake of an old classic Lego pirate and he looks very much like his uh, classical version except for his mustache that grew a lot because in the original minifigure he just had a small mustache printed on his head and here he has a little mustache piece that actually goes around his neck but it looks really nice on this minifigure. There's a nice face print with some details and some uh, some scars on his face and a smile. A very familiar looking torso piece with a white and striped blue and a belt that continues in the back and just like the other two minifigures we saw before the lag piece only has one color without any printing on it and of course he's uh, he's wearing his uh, classical classical red bandana hat next up we have another new character this is called dark shark doubloons and he's the only one with the short legs in this set uh, so he is uh, probably a lot younger than the rest or just just a bit smaller. He has the same torso print as we saw in the last minifigure of Starboard. Although his color scheme looks much more one-sided with only white and blue. So small blue legs and the, the same type of blue bandana hat uh, that we saw on Starboard but in a different color. He has a little pouch around his neck and his face only has a print on one side. With a bit of a sassy look with one uh, eyebrow raised and a smirk. And unfortunately I think this is the least interesting minifigure you get in this set. Then we have a really beautiful minifigure called Tatuga and you can clearly see where that name comes from because on his torso there's a lot of tattoos printed. On the front you can see uh, some mermaids, an anchor and some parrots and on the back there is a huge pirate ship with some wind printed. Of course to see these tattoos he's not wearing a shirt but he is wearing a, a high belt with a golden medallion and he just has a normal green leg piece without any printing on it. He has a very cool hair piece with his hair tied up in, uh, in a bun at the back and if you take that off you can see that he does have a print on two sides of his face. On one side he has a small smile and the other side he looks a bit mean but on both sides he has his uh, no notable goatee and small moustache. This is an absolutely gorgeous looking minifigure. Then we have the second broadside brother. He looks uh, almost identical as his twin, only that his color scheme is reversed. So in, uh, he is wearing a white and red striped shirt with blue pants and a blue hat. He has the same moustache. Uh, but if you look behind that, you can see that his, uh, the, his face print is actually uh, much different than his brother's. He looks a bit less rough with a bit of a smile on his face, his eyebrows raised and just some stubbles as a beard. And another difference compared to his brother is that he uh, apparently didn't have enough money for a proper belt and he is just wearing a rope around his waist. The combination of these two brothers is a really nice addition since we knew them from uh, the old classic pirate lines. Then we got another new minifigure. Figure. 
Then we get another new character called Robin Lute. And she is uh, another pirate that we've never seen before. And she has a very distinct green, brown and white color palette. On her torso we can see a green vest with uh, a white shirt below it that goes into the sleeves. And that print continues on the back. Again, the lag piece doesn't have any printing on it and it's just a normal brown lag piece but it fits the minifigure very well. And then on her hat she has a beautiful double molded hat piece with the classical pirate hat in brown and the has attached to it in a bun below it. If you take this off you can see that she has a print on both sides. On one side she uh, has some smudge on her face but with a smile and on the other side her face is clean with just a small smirk and I really like this minifigure. It's a great addition to the crew. And of course finally we have a minifigure that should look very very familiar. Uh, because this is Captain Redbeard, also known as Captain Brickbeard. And this one is directly inspired on the classical 80s, early 90s pirate Captain Redbeard. Although his uniform and his printing has got a huge upgrade, the details on it are so beautifully done with the green and black and gold color palette there, with a belt around it, uh, actually two belts, one uh, sideways across the torso and one uh, just horizontally, a print that continues in the back, the lag piece with a very familiar wooden leg on one side and one uh, hook for a hand and one of the biggest differences we can see is actually in the face because his red beard turned a bit gray and I think that's just so clever that they made him look a bit older uh, because he aged also about 30 years uh, from uh, when he was first seen in the Lego universe but he's still very recognizable with a scruffy red beard and an eye patch on one side, no printing on the other side of the hat, of course, and then uh, to top it off, his classical pirate hat with a uh, with a skull logo on top of it. I think by now it's quite obvious that this is one of my favorite minifigures of all time. He just looks so incredible, and I think they did a really great job with the redesign they gave him here. So we get eight classically inspired minifigures in this set. The most notable of all of them is, of course. Uh, a minifigure that you've all been all have seen before especially if you follow my instagram account and it's pirate uh, going by the name red beard um, that's the name that the pirate uh, or Cap pirate captain officially had in the original uh, pirates team so what is the theory about Brickbeard and Redbeard? Because they look very similar. Um, in, the, uh, in the 2000 era, uh, when the newer pirate line was launched by Lego, um, the main pirate captain uh, went by the name Brickbeard. And um, the theory is that Brickbeard is actually the same pirate as Redbeard, going by a different name to stay a bit incognito. So Redbeard, but I chose the name Brickbeard for this channel, but still inspired on the classical, uh, the classical pirate captain that we know so well. All minifigures are uh, very, very well designed. The details on them and the prints are spectacular. Some of them uh, with the striped shirts might not seem too interesting. Um, but if you keep in mind that they are all throwbacks to the, uh, to the older uh, 80s and 90s uh, pirates, uh, it's just super nice that they really build a story around it. If you look in the instruction manual, there is even some, uh, some background information about all of the specific pirates. And it's really nice that they added the crew with some, uh, with some more members. Uh, so we get some, uh, some extra female pirates in there and some people that we've, uh, some pirates that we've never seen before. Uh, but are all inspired on some uh, older uh, Lego pirates. Um, there are unique pieces in that. Again, the prints are fantastic. The nostalgia is really high. So the minifigure selection of this uh, of this set, although eight minifigures for 200 euros doesn't that might not sound like a huge amount. I think it's very decent uh, for for a set of this size. Uh, but just the quality of the minifigures is excellent, and I'm gonna rate that a nine out of ten. So the building experience of this set is without a doubt one of the best, if not the best, building experiences I've ever had with Lego. And that says a lot because I've built some Lego in my years. Um, it is just an amazing building experience. Uh, in some parts very traditional and very easy to follow and in other parts very complex and, uh, and, and clever uh, new techniques that they use. Uh, so for instance, we have the, uh, the front of the boat on the side here that is hinged crookedly. We have some windows that are uh, crooked. We have a rudder that functions as a door. Uh, just some super clever, uh, clever things that they, uh, that they did here to build this all up. And to make it even better, uh, I think, which is perfect for a set like this, 
uh, they didn't use a base plate or anything like that, but everything is brick built on the uh, on the base uh, with the nice uh, unique pieces here, uh, serving as coastlines or sandy beaches. And this is just a building experience that is so incredibly, uh, incredibly great. And I just don't have any other words for that. So of course the building experience for this set is gonna get a 10 out of 10. You can't get better than this set if you, especially if you like the traditional uh, Lego sets uh, and some variation, some, uh, some innovation in there. This is the perfect set to go for. Then we come to a big one, playability. And like I said, uh, you can rebuild this, uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't already take some parts, uh, some parts of the ship off. So uh, let me give you an example of that. Uh, you can take all the individual parts of the boat, you can take them off and you can play around with them. You can put them, uh, put them uh, back in the, in the other direction if you want to. Uh, even these elements here can be, uh, can be lifted off. This can be taken off. Uh, so there is a lot of stuff that you can do with, uh, with just the main island as it is in this, uh, in this setup. Um, but that's not all there is to playability. Of course, you just get an amazing huge pirate island to play around with. Everything about this set uh, is just so interesting to, to take a look at, to, to, uh, to play around with. And um, the, of course, the inside of the, uh, of the island is completely, uh, completely interiorized. Um, you can even take these two parts easily, uh, easily off each other. I know that some people might have some complaints about that because it's not one huge piece, but actually two elements. But I think it's a super clever idea because it, uh, it, it, can, uh, it, it gives you the opportunity to really move it around and play around with it much better. And it serves the playability of this set really, really well. Um, eight minifigures is also, I think, more than enough to, uh, to, to make the money's worth uh, in play time alone. Um, and I haven't even started talking about the option uh, to really transform this into the ship and play around with the ship with a deserted island next to it. Uh, that's something we're gonna delve in deeper next time. Uh, of course, we get some cannons, we get a shark, um, a little boat, uh, just super nice looking details, a lot of lanterns and, uh, and um, uh, bushes and trees. Um, it's just a fantastic set also in playability. So again, this is going to get a 10 out of 10. I am not going to rate this any lower because it really, really deserves it. Then we come to, for me, the most, uh, the most interesting thing about this set, the display value. This is just such a beautiful set to look at. Um, and I don't think I'm the only one because I have this affinity with the Lego Pirate themes. Um, I think it's something that for everybody that uh, that will walk into the walk into your house, this will draw their attention. It's just such a magnificent piece, uh, and the, sh the the height of it and the layout of it, it just is so interesting to look at. So many small details. Uh, so one thing that I really love that I have to mention is on the side here, uh, we actually get um, uh, get a throwback to the uh, to the uh, the early '90s um, uh, pirate set where they had the uh, the, the Islanders um, theme. And uh, this is really a classical type of build that they put in here uh, as sort of a little ruin. Um, all, the, all the small details in here make this really a beautiful set to, to look at. And of course, like I said, I haven't even started talking about the interiorization of the set. Um, on this part, which is uh, the, main, uh, the main cabin of the, uh, of the captain, uh, you can even lift the roof off so you have a clear view on the inside, which is fully decorated and it looks beautiful. Uh, this is just a fantastic display piece as well. And uh, you might have guessed it, but this is gonna get another 10 out of 10. So this set is looking really, really good at the moment. Then a bit about the parts of this set. And um, with 2,500 pieces, you're getting a lot of parts, of course. Um, but also the parts that you are getting, uh, they, are, they are really, really well chosen and uh, perfect to, uh, even if you would get a second one of this, really create something different, different of your own or even rebuild this one uh, on its own. There are not a huge amount of huge pieces used. So we have uh, the hull of the ship, 
that consists actually of uh, I think three or four uh, three or four elements. Uh, so the front and then the uh, the middle and the back parts. Um, those are the biggest pieces that they use in the set, and then of course the masts uh, that we have on top of here. But most of it is really brick built uh, with smaller pieces. So it gives you a lot of pieces to play around with. And the selection that we get here is just really good. You have a lot of unique pieces in here, uh, some unique colors, um, some just a really good batch of uh, of pieces to create something of your own if you would want to. The color scheme is really nice looking, fantastic even. And um, I think in pieces there is not a lot that they could have improved on except for one little tiny thing. And uh, that is the sails that we have here on the side. You can see, you might be able to see it a bit. Let me get this off. They are, as Lego often does, printed on one side. And that is just a shame. One side looks really nice, bright and shiny. And the other side really is a bit uh, a bit dull looking, uh, and that is just the only complaint I can uh, can give about uh, in a way the display value, but also the parts because this is not really uh, yeah the the only real big complaint that I can uh, that I have about this set. Um, and in parts, I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Just an amazing selection, and you're gonna have so much fun with it, even if you break it down to just use it for the parts. And then value for money for 200 euros, 200 dollars, uh, coming down to eight cents per piece. That is a very good price point. And at the moment, since this set has already been out for a while, it is still uh, it is still uh, easily available at the moment. But there are some nice discounts on this set, so that means you can get it for uh, I think somewhere between uh, 160, 180 uh, dollars or euros at the moment, which uh, makes the price per piece ratio even better. And it's just an incredible price. For me, I couldn't wait uh, to get this, so I bought it for the original price. But even at the, that 200 euros uh, with 8 cents per piece, I think this is absolutely an incredible value for money. You get an amazingly huge box of Lego with two models that you can build. And um, I think it's easily worth that money. I even think that they could have um, uh, could have bumped it up a bit if they wanted to, but I'm glad they didn't because the price point on this set is as good as it gets for a big set like this. And um, you get, an, uh, uh, like I said, an amazing uh, vintage looking box with it, a very detailed instruction manual with some uh, nice text and some stories uh, in there. And I think they, yeah, it would be hard to, uh, to, to even uh, top this in that regard. So I'm going to give the value for money another 9 out of 10, which comes down to a 9.5, which I round up to a 10 out of 10. This is, in my opinion, the best set that is available from LEGO at the moment. Uh, and it has, uh, it has been out for uh, like, uh, I think, one, one and a half year or something at the moment. Uh, this is just... If you have to decide on one Lego set, and uh, I think even if the pirate team doesn't really, really uh, speak to you that much, I would absolutely uh, argue that this is the set to go for. If you have 200 euros to spend, I can't think of a better Lego set to get uh, than this one. This is just in every regard a nearly perfect Lego set. And I can only advise it to anyone uh, who is a fan of Lego, especially if you like the Lego Pirates line. Um, I know there have been some complaints about people, uh, uh, some complaints by people about the uh, the difference between this and the originally submitted model. Uh, but I personally really think that they only improved it, uh, improved it like incredibly well. And all the improvements were made in consideration with the original fan designer. So he approved everything that has been done. And I really think they couldn't have done much, uh, much of a better job than they did with this set already. Um, so this is absolutely a set that I can only advise you get it if you can uh, while it lasts because it has been on the market for uh, over a year at the moment and um, it will probably uh, still be available for a while. Uh, but since at the moment it is, uh, you can find it a bit discounted, I would absolutely uh, advise you to get this if you, are, uh, if you are in doubt about it. You will not regret this. This is an amazing Lego set. 
And with that, I will close off this video. Uh, don't forget to watch the speed build of this video. And of course, uh, the next video I will, I will be uploading is the, uh, the building of the second, uh, the second model uh, that we get with this set. So the boat itself. And like always, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment and let me know if you agree with me. Do you think this is, this is, or this might be the best Lego set uh, ever released? Um, or at least recently uh, the best Lego set released. Um, let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.